Hello, last year I made a video comparing the capabilities of a vintage Pentacon 135 f2.8 lens versus a modern Sigma 135, so say focal length f1.8 lens for astrophotography. I was shooting both of these lenses at f2.8, which is the maximum aperture of the vintage Pentacon, and I was doing some comparisons. If you want to check out that video, I will link it on the end screen of that video so you can follow along. However, a lot of people pointed out that it's not a very good idea, or at least it's not fair for the cheaper lens to compare it at its widest aperture, because typically at its widest apertures, it's not going to perform the best. So it's best to stop it down a little. So today is kind of a follow up to that video where I will be comparing a vintage Yashica 28 millimeters F.2 lens, this one right here that I bought for like 50 bucks or something, versus a modern Sigma 28 millimeters, so again, same focal length, f1.4. However, I will be shooting these lenses. Uh, I will be comparing the f2.8, which is the maximum on this one, versus f2.8 on this one, but also made a comparison by stopping down this lens one stop to f4. So f4 on the Ashika versus f4 on the Sigma. So we have four images to take a look at here. and. Just let me say at the beginning that there is indeed a massive difference at the performance of the Yashica if you stop it down one stop from f2.8 to f4, there's a huge difference. So let's jump to the computer and let me show you those images. Alright, so we are here in Adobe Lightroom and we have actually five images. I'm going to get into that in a moment. So the first one is the Sigma at f2.8. We have 30 seconds of an exposure. I was doing it tracked, so we shouldn't worry about star trails. ISO 3200, which is going to be the same ISO across all of these images. And this is the one shot at f4. And if we look at these uh, side by side and kind of zoom in. As you can see in the center, there is not much of a difference. Everything looks pretty much perfect. If we go to the sides, like here is Sirius, as you can see, it looks perfect. There is no astigmatism or coma, virtually none of that at these apertures on the Sigma. The Sigma is really a fantastic lens for a sort of wide field astrophotography. Of course, what we have here is Orion, in case you didn't notice, there's the entire Orion constellation. We also have a bit of Taurus here, a Rosette, Nebula, and the Milky Way goes right like this. And let's go here. And right here we have the Yashica at f4. And here is the Yashica at f2.8. And immediately you can see a huge difference. So let me go to the comparison view. Again, we have the, uh, this one is 2.8 on the left. And this one is f4 uh, on the right. And as you can see, there's a huge difference. There is uh, this kind of a star blooming effect on the brighter stars. Here you have the Orion belt. And as you can see, there is this kind of glow around these stars. Also around uh, here we have, what do we have here? Here we have Betelgeuse, for instance. And as you can see, there is this kind of a glow and it's not even circular. It kind of looks uh, not that great, honestly. And of course, uh, here on the sides, if we go to Sirius, you can see a ton of astigmatism. Whereas uh, stop down only one stop, there is pretty much no astigmatism here. As you can see, there is still some co some kind of coma. And coma is where the stars are look like kind of a small lines that go towards the center of the image. So it's definitely coma because if we go here, it goes this side towards the center. If we go here, it goes this side. So it's definitely coma. But I also think that, um, you know, on the, on the image with the f2.8, there's definitely more of these aberrations and this, this, this kind of blooming effect. And this blooming effect is actually interesting because this is something that I personally like. And I know a lot of people like that. If you have wide field shots of uh, constellations, the night sky, it's cool to accentuate on the brighter stars with this kind of a star glow effect uh, to kind of make them pop out so you know your viewer can see and maybe recognize the constellations and i usually do that using a star glow filter from case uh, i use that alongside my uh, sigma 28 which is what i usually do for these kind of shots to accentuate on the images and we can actually take a look at the comparison of how it behaves so here's an image taken with the star glow filter and with the sigma 
And let's compare it to the image uh, from the Yashica F2.8. Let's unlink this and let's go to the Orion's belt again. And as you can see, it looks kind of similar. Uh, it definitely looks uh, cleaner on the image from the, uh, from the Sigma. It's more organic and more sort of, you know, pleasant looking. But if we go to Betelgeuse, uh, you can definitely see a difference here. Here it kind of looks blotchy and not that good. And here it looks perfectly circular again. So uh, if you want to go for this kind of a star glow effect, uh, it's definitely better to do it with a proper lens and a proper filter if you want the best results rather than exploiting sort of a flaw of a vintage lens. However, if you're on a budget, like I mentioned in this um, previous video about the 135 millimeters comparison, if you're on a budget and you want to get into astrophotography, you know, these, um, these vintage lenses are cheap, are usually pretty bright, easy to focus with a manual focus ring, and you can stop it down like one stop to get even better out of them um and get pretty decent results as you can see this is again the yashica at f4 and if we compare it to the sigma at f4 uh, let's go to the comparison um, you can see there's a little bit of a difference in colors the color rendition is not that uniform as it is on a model lens uh, you can see on the vintage lens it's a bit more greenish here in the center and more kind of purple on the outside but you could probably fix that to some extent using uh, some kind of tricks in Photoshop. And if you want a budget, I think doing that, um, you know, starting with a vintage lens, stopping it out a little, could give you pretty decent results, like I mentioned in the previous video again. However, if you are going to stop down a lens, you're probably going to need some kind of a star tracker. However, you are definitely going to need one anyway, if you want to kind of advance in astrophotography, so you can get a star tracker, get a cheap lens, go out there, start exploring, stop it down, it definitely helps to, to bring out more quality out of a vintage lens. And then you can advance to a better lens, keep the star tracker and sort of progress in this hobby. There's always going to be stuff that you can add to your kit. So having a star tracker is always a good idea. I will link down below all of these images if you want to check them out and pixel peep. Of course, every other vintage lens, maybe even the same kind of make a same model of the lens, but different copy is going to behave kind of differently. This is how it goes with vintage lenses. So your results might differ and maybe your results might be even worse uh, even if you stop down. So don't hold me responsible for that. Do it at your own responsibility. But yeah, that's pretty much it. What I wanted to share with you. Like I said, the bottom line is indeed stopping down the lens definitely helps. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a like. I would really appreciate it. As always, also consider subscribing to my channel. I will be posting a lot more videos around astrophotography and photography, that kind of stuff. So that would be definitely welcome and hopefully have some clear nights uh, in the near future and see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.